Hi, everybody. This time we're going to talk about properties of matter. Last time we were talking about matter, and matter is stuff. It's the stuff that makes up you, me, kittens, planets, rocks, and margaritas. Properties are what we use to describe that matter. So, for example, here I have a notebook, a picture of a, of a notebook. So, if you were going to describe it, take, hit pause, spend 10 seconds, describe it. Okay, are you back? All right, let's see how you did. If you were going to describe it, words I would use are it's red, it is rectangular, um, it is made out of paper, it has some sort of a spirally edge to it, it has holes in it, um, it has a red cover, it has white sheets in it. You could get quantitative and actually give the dimensions, how wide and how high it is is if you had it in front of you in person. So that's all I mean when I talk about properties of matter. We are actually describing it the same way that you would describe a car or anything else that you are observing or looking at. In chemistry, we're very specific. We have two types of properties. We have physical properties and we have chemical properties. And these definitions are very unique and specific. A physical property describes the matter all by itself when it is sitting alone by itself. That's a physical property. A chemical property of the matter describes how it is going to interact with other matter. So let's look at this. This is a piece of copper sulfate solid. Now, if this crystalline copper sulfate, if you were going to describe it, what kind of words would you use? Blue. Um, it has some neat crystalline shapes to it. You could use more descriptive words of a very pretty blue, cobalt blue, or different dark kinds of blue. Um, you could give its mass. You could give its weight. Um, if you were being very sciencey, you could count how many edges or points it had. You could give its density. There's a whole bunch of things, its dimensions. You could create some very quantitative um, data that had new numbers to it and some qualitative data that was more descriptive. Now, a chemical property is how the matter reacts or interacts with something else. So if you take copper sulfate, and here is the chemical formula for copper sulfate, and you dissolve it in water, you would get copper sulfate AQ, which means aqueous. Aqueous means dissolved in water. If you took copper sulfate and put a piece of zinc metal with it, what would happen is you would get a chemical reaction that produced solid copper plus aqueous zinc sulfate. This chemical reaction, meaning that copper sulfate reacts with solid zinc, that is a chemical property of copper sulfate. One of the things that is a huge, big, massive hint with a chemical property is it always talks about other matter. Some other chemical is going to be involved. So let's practice this. If I ask you to list some properties of this log, this hunk of wood, so hit pause for about 10, 15 seconds, describe some physical properties of this. Okay, are you back? All right, what did you write down? Now, if you wrote down that it is cylindrical, you wrote down it's kind of a brown color, you wrote down it's a log, it's made out of wood. Um, all of those things are physical properties. You and I are really good at describing things physically because that's what we are used to. So when we talk about color, odor, weight, size, shape, density, this floats on top of that, that's heavy, that's light. Boiling temperature, melting temperature, those are all physical properties. These describe something alone, all by itself, not interacting with anything else. This does not talk about 
something occurring with a chemical reaction interacting with something else. So let's talk about this piece of wood again. And can you think of a chemical property? If this piece of wood reacted with something else, what could it be? What sort of interaction with something else could occur? Well, some of the things I think of are, first off, this can burn. Now, I want you to start thinking like a chemist. And from now on, from this moment forward, if you say burn, burn means react with oxygen. React with oxygen. That's what burning means. Now, the piece of wood is not going to rust, but re rust means react with oxygen as well. Metals rust hydrocarbons and fuels burn. React with bases. Some things react with bases. Some things like metals react with acids. Whenever you talk about a chemical property, big, massive, huge, huge hint is it always involves at least two different things going on. It's not one chemical, it's two chemicals. And those two chemicals like you pour vinegar or acid on something organic, like a piece of wood, and it's going to dehydrate it. It is going to turn it black or brown very often. It's going to change its chemical structure. So a physical change, when we physically change something, we're going to change its physical properties, but its composition is going to remain the same. So here's a bunch of examples. If I chop firewood, you chop firewood, it's still firewood, but it might be smaller pieces. Even if they're tiny little bitty slivers, they're still firewood. The composition of the material is the same. You crush a pop can, it's still made out of aluminum, but it's just changed shape. You boil water, it's liquid water, or you boil it, it's now steam, but the molecules are still water. You take an iron horseshoe, and if it is a flat bar of iron or it's been shaped into a curved shape, still iron. So you change what it physically looks like, but the chemical composition is still the same. Chemical change means that the original substance has been converted or changed into one or more new substances. One of those, two of them you see constantly is rusting and burning. Um, rusting, you take a piece of metal, it is reacting with oxygen, and you get some sort of an oxide, and that is iron oxide is real common for rust. Here's an example, probably a nickel compound. Nickel usually gives us those pretty green colors and you get something new created. Burning, you burn a log, you are going to get out of it. Heat is going to be released. You're going to get gases. You're going to get some ash. You are going to get a pile of debris out the other end. But when you're all done, the molecules at the end are going to be a whole lot different than the molecules that you started with. They're not going to be the same. These two things are going to be very, very different. And that means a chemical change has occurred. So one more time, a physical change. Here's an example, just boiling water. You start with water molecules and they are water molecules. You add heat to them, same molecules but they are just spread out. You've just made them vaporize, which means move further and further apart, but they are the same molecules. They look identical. A chemical change, you have taken something like, this is methane. Methane is the gas that we use in gas stoves. Not unless you live in the country like I do, and I have a propane gas tank, uh, but most of us have methane, CH4, and it's burned in oxygen. And out the other end, the products are carbon dioxide and water vapor. So the molecules out the other end are the same atoms, but they've been totally rearranged. Here's another chemical change. Hydrogen reacting with chlorine to produce hydrogen chloride. Different products from the beginning. What's on the Output is a whole lot different than what you started with. That's a chemical change. Okay, let's see if you've got this. And I apologize that this slide is a little blurry, but it was a good slide. It was worth using even a little blurry. So here we've got a substance and we've got 
we've got red and green bits, one of each, one of each atom bond to, bonded together. So my question is, which is a physical change from A? Is it B, C, or D? Just a physical change from A. Is it B, C, or D? Well, that's going to be D. And that's because they're the same, one green, one red, but they're spread out. They're further apart. This is probably a picture of something that's gone from being a liquid into being a gas. Both B and C represent a chemical change because the molecules have been broken apart and rearranged in a different format. All right, test yourself. See if you've got this. Here are a variety of different changes. So for each of these, what I'd like to have you do is pick out if this is a physical or chemical change. So hit pause, take a minute, do this, and then we're going to come back and do these together. So hit pause, do these. I'll be right back. Okay, are you back? All right, let's try these. Let's start in this upper left-hand corner. The three dots going into single dots, is this a physical or a chemical change? This is actually chemical because these three atoms, three atoms were bonded together and then they're broken apart. That's a chemical change. Here you've got a blue and a yellow atom and they're now broken up so you are reassembled. So you have yellow and blue ones. That's going to be a chemical change. Here you've got clusters of three, and now you've got clusters of three further apart. What is this going to be? Physical. That's a physical change. Here you have got some greens and purples, and here you've got total rearrangement. So what's that? Chemical. You betcha. Chemical change. Here you've got some blues and yellows, blues and yellows, and you got different stuff. Chemical change. You got that one right. Okay, blues and yellows, blues and yellows in little threes, and they're far apart, and now they're close together. So what's that going on there? Physical change. Yep. Okay, physical change. And here you've got green dots separated, and now they're clustered together in little threesies. This is tricky. This is chemical, because here they were separate, and now they are bonded together. Okay, I promise I won't make them that tricky on a quiz or anything like that. It's probably going to be more like this or questions more like this, okay? All right, that will do for physical and chemical changes, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.